What's up, everyone? What's up, everyone? It is Best Bot, Kid Smooth, co host, Attic, Lord Attic, ILP. What's going on? Good uh, morning. How you doing? Yeah, it's, been a, it's been a hectic week, man. Yeah, I see you getting into all sorts of trouble. Uh, is it toxic uh, positivity? Toxic masculinity? Toxic uh, relax? Toxic too uh you're too serious you're too negative oh man um we're we gonna definitely get into that but you know shouts out to everyone uh from on the patreon shout out to um uh you know weapon wheel crew uh you know we we're, we're going strong and uh i just want to we're on episode 32 no, no Patreon questions. So this episode is going to go fairly quick. This is probably we're shooting for like maybe 40, 45 minutes. Um, there's not much going on. Um, just going to start off with uh, the games we've been playing. Attic, we can start with you. Um, pretty much the only thing I've been playing is Rebirth. Mm, okay. How's that going for you? Are you almost done with it? Um, no, not really. I, I'm about, I would say... About twenty hours in. Okay. Okay. Um, and I really ain't done nothing. Like, oh really? I just got to a place called uh, the Go uh, the Golden Saucer, the Gold Saucer. Um, I know you you're not a a, a graphics um person, but there's been a lot of uh polarizing discussion about the game and its uh visuals and its performance uh, how you've been playing the game and what is your take on uh, its uh visual makeup uh i've been playing on um performance mode mm -hmm. and people said well you know this is like one of the the games that you should play on uh, on fidelity but mm -hmm. my thing is like i don't care if this game is at 60 consistently like if it's above 30 i'm playing on that i try i played it a little bit on performance at the beginning because they kind of make you do it yeah and i wasn't liking that experience like mm, okay um but otherwise i mean this is this is rated highly on um metacritic and um is this uh, would you say this is an early game of the year nominee for you yeah, I mean it's it's definitely one of those games where you know I could totally see it getting a game of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think there's other games that hasn't came out yet mm -hmm. that we need to see, like Dragon's Dogma Two. I know a lot of people yep. are gonna like that game. Um, you know, I still think a Vow could be a contender. Uh, I don't know about Hellblade because I'm not like the biggest Hellblade fan, but I do think there's plenty of games that's still out there that uh you know probably. If I were a betting person, I would say this game has a good chance of winning Game of the Year, uh, but it's definitely a nomina uh, a nomination. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say um. So I haven't obviously I don't bother with uh, Square Enix uh, to that degree. Um, they get on my nerves, <laughs> but um, uh, you know I'm I'm happy that you know they you know put out something that's going to be uh, successful. I'm happy you're liking it, but it's just never Final Fantasy's never been on my radar. Um, what I've been playing, I've uh kind of been bouncing around. The goal, right, for me is to do uh, a game completion, whether it's a game is in Game Pass or uh, it's in my backlog, it's just to go into a, a game that I found remotely interesting and try to go for the 100% completion if feasible. Now, a lot of people, you know, knock me for a lot of my completions are on like, you know, bull crap games, right? Jumping touch, taco type games. Um, but um, I've been, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go and, 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 and like, there's a lot of obviously triple A, double A experiences that I enjoyed where I could see myself going for uh, the 100% uh, completion. And so what I was recently playing um, is Dead Island 2 um now we've well, we, we've had the game it w just went to game pass so you know if you're a game pass subscriber check this game out you have no business missing out on this game it was the best zombie game uh to come out in a better half of uh i want to say five years it's my favorite zombie game since 
Dead Rising 3. Uh, Dead Rising 3 was my favorite. But right now, Dead Rising 3 is very, very outdated. It's hard to play. I tried going back to it uh, a couple weeks ago. I can't play. I can't play the frame rate, the screen breakup, and the uh, graphical glitches in that game. It has is not age well. That game is definitely due for a remake. But um, I've done Dead Island 2, and I've uh, you know, I went to wrap up some achievements and. Uh, I forgot there was a an expansion that came out, and so I uh, did the expansion, and then I was able also to wrap up those achievements, and then wrap up the, I think the two main quest achievements I was missing. They were more like stat based stuff, um, and I was able to do that. So I got the hundred percent completion. And I you know uninstalled the, the game. Um, I will reinstall it should they drop another um, expansion because that game is that good, is that dope. Um, so definitely recommend uh, Dead Island um, two. Uh, prior to Dead Island, I did uh, Bluey. Got the hundred percent completion on that. You no, know, I count that game. I don't think that's a that's not one of those two dollar, uh, you know, BS games. This is a it's, it's a it's a, a TV show adoption game. They did Peppa Pig. I was not feeling Peppa Pig, but Bluey the video game uh, was actually pretty interesting. It was very, very interactive, um, um, and intuitive, uh, and I enjoyed it. I think they did a good job with that game. Um, I don't know how far we haven't missed a week, but you know, obviously I played banner shoes. I'm trying to think right now I'm trying to get back into, I picked up, I want to try to get through far cry four and far cry three. Like uh, far cry three has been the longest game that it took me to be not saying that the game is long. It's just, I've been trying to play it for years and I'll make some significant progress during the time that I'm playing with it. And then I stop. Uh, Cause I get like, or either bored i just want like all right just let's let's push the story um i started that uh, I'm, I'm i'm about 70 I'm, I'm i believe i'm about 60 percent through far cry 3 started far cry 4 it's you know it's a it's a bit of an, an improvement um and i started i'm going back to i think i'm going to try to do ghostwire tokyo i've already beaten the game but i do want to uh, i believe there's a new game plus i'm not exactly sure uh, but if there is, the goal is to get the remaining uh, achievements in the game. Um, I don't mind playing through the game. I beat the game twice in like uh, 2023. I, I beat it on PC, then I beat it on uh, Xbox when it came to Game Pass. It's also on Game Pass too by uh, Tango. Uh, but a couple things here and there. There's not many uh, major drops coming. I think the the, the next game. What, what are we in March? Um, so Final Fantasy was the big game that came out this year. I'm not. Been, I have not been on the Hell Divers hi- hype train. Um, um, I have it. Yeah, it's just, just like okay. It, it's just to me. It's just another, you know, it, another game. Like, don't get me wrong. I do think it looks very interesting. But yeah, like, like there's literally people trying to like tell me that that's like the next big game, and it's like no. <laughs> it's like look, that that that's a fun game. It's like Power Worlds, you mm-hmm. know. When we were talking about Power Worlds and, you know, people were hyping the hell up out of Power Worlds, yeah. what was the first thing I said? I said, well, we got to see what this game does in the next couple weeks. Like, yeah. people love to jump on trends, but then just leave and never come back. And what happened? It dropped, like, 80% of its player base. Yeah, yeah. So right now, it's, 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 it's at that, I think, Power Worlds is like, but it's still maintaining a decent amount. Like, it had, like, an unprecedented amount of people that played it like during the, the first 48 hours which is like it hit that three million mark um it hit that um and, and that's that's fine mm-hmm. but i'm more referring to the people that act like this was the next big thing like yeah it's like no it was like let's be real here that uh this has been a good a decent year for for gaming uh you know in terms of games mm-hmm. but you know in terms of everything else it uh this this has been like an okay year like and coming yeah off it of definitely last hasn't year, yeah go ahead and coming off of last year is like damn <laughs> no I, I, i'm i'm with you on that now i do personally i stand by my conviction and what i said I, I do think 2024 would be a better year than 2023 as far as game releases i think 2023 was highly overrated you know i had uh, my share of favorite games now my favorite games uh of of last year were not quote unquote the cream of the crop the everything that got nominated for game of the year you know what i mean my favorite games were dead island 2 robocop starfield uh wolong fallen dynasty um things to that uh things to that nature i had a lot of fun with those type of games uh 
we're early in the year. I mean, I do think Banishers is a dope game. Um, I do think uh, that I think uh, what's the game? I think Dragon's Dogma is going to be good. I think every Xbox, I think all the games Xbox is putting out this year is going to be pretty dope. Um, and and then there's those uh, you got Flint Lock. I think is going to be dope. Uh, the, that would be like the Liza P equivalent uh, for this year. Um, and then you got the Elden Ring expansion, which is uh, going to be coming out, which I, I have to literally train myself how to play the game again so that I can actually do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, though, the, I haven't been on the Helldivers uh, bandwagon. Power Worlds, like I said, I played a little bit. I played more Power World than I, I did of Helldivers. Um, there's now, obviously, Final Fantasy is not my cup of tea. Looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2. And what I did do just so I can not be super new, but I'm I'm not the biggest fans of Capcom games, right? I like Capcom. I respect them. They have incredible, they have an incredible roster of characters and IPs, right? You no, know, obviously the Resident Evil, the Monster Hunters, Street Fighter, um, and 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 but like the thing is is that I have like the stuff I like from Capcom is the stuff they don't really make anymore. Like they don't make Lost Planet. They don't make Dead Risings, um, stuff I like really that. Like Dead Rising, Dead Rising yeah. was a fun game. Yeah, and those are like those are like my free. So Dragon Dumb, when I think of now, now, I will say I did like Devil May Cry Five. DMC is it was my like my last favorite real action game, uh, from Capcom. So I, I have nothing against uh, uh, Capcom. It's just that. I don't know what Dragon Dogma is. Is it more Souls is it, or is it more like? Or is it more? What would you compare that to? Um, because I da- I downloaded Drag Dragons Dogma, I Dark Horizons. I literally downloaded that last night just so I could I never start get, the original Dragon get myself Dogma. familiar with it. I never played the original Dragons Dogma, so I could I literally couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. Um, but right I now, I mean. Like- it's like rpg based though i know yeah that. it's it's very now based off the first one it's very like what i would call loose loose gameplay meaning that you could just pick up anything and throw it like i picked up people i picked up boxes anything you see you could throw things you could do you, when you do have loose gameplay like that it makes for a lot of things you can do in the game now i don't know as far as uh what it means to the core gameplay of it uh, i already fought like big monsters big creatures um uh building up currently building up uh characters the uh right now the game action buttons is the face buttons so uh i'm curious i'm going to play more of dragon dragon's dogma dark horizons the first game i don't know how long the game is i'm probably gonna um uh look up on how long to beat to see how you know what i'm looking at if i decide to play it seriously because if it's one of those uh type of games i might have to drop all the games I'm playing right now just to focus on that one, being that Dragon Dragon's Dogma 2 is due to release, I believe, on the 22nd um, of this uh, uh, of this month. So that's uh, probably, probably worth it. I'm going to look more into it. But uh, but I, I, don't, I don't know if the game is free, but I feel like I never owned the game. But apparently you maybe you have it because I, I don't know why I have access to the game, but I was able to download it when I looked yeah, it up. I, OK, cool. Uh, it's it was an old on game. Sale one time and I was wanting to try it. Yeah, I th- um, I do I'm, think I, because right now I, I'm doing Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, after I beat Final Fantasy, I kind of want to play um, that um, Unicorn Overlord game. You, I keep hearing about this game. What like, what is it? Oh, it's 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 like um. It's like a strategy game, like army based. I, I don't think you would like it. Oh, right? absolutely it's definitely not. not something that's your forte. But uh, you know, it's definitely something I like. You know, and um, I looked at that that price though. It's like sixty bucks, and I'm just like, Damn, I don't know. Maybe man. I shouldn't look at a game and, and like judge it off of its graphics. But it, it, it's like sixteen bit area or thirty two bit area. I, I don't know the difference between the two. But it's definitely not like, like modern day graphics. Yeah, and I yeah, look no. at something like a sixty dollar price tag, and I'm just like, man, like I know I shouldn't judge this game off of this, but you know, I'm sitting here looking at these games. I'm like, I don't understand why these studios 
ask these type of prices from these type of games. Like, cause it, cause it's not even about, do they think their games worth $60? Like, mm -hmm. like read the room when I can go out there and buy final fantasy seven uh, rebirth for like $10 more. And then uh, for your game, I have to spend just about the amount the that game is like, I just don't understand why devs like if they would drop that game and that game would be like thirty bucks. I bet you would sell way better. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. But it, th these these people, you know, and I get it. If they feel like they can make that money, then make that money. But I do feel like that's one of the biggest issues we have in the industry right now is people overvaluing not necessarily what the game's worth, mm -hmm. but they don't try to compete. Yeah. On what is being sold, like you know, you, you sit there, you got like two weeks. Uh, Dragon's Dogma's out. Like, there's just so much out, and these companies want you to pay sixty dollars for what I would consider. I mean, it. it I know this goes sound really messed up. If it can run on the Switch, it shouldn't be sixty dollars. <laughs> oh, the, the the funny you say that being that most games on Switch is sixty dollars, uh, and never on a discount. Unless it's uh, yeah, third I mean, party. I, I guess I'm, I, I'm more referring to third party stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because obviously, you know, Nintendo has their own little flavor, and that's why they've been successful. I'm more, mainly just talking about man. Like, I do think that's one of the issues of the industry, and that's one of the reasons that the bubble was getting closer and closer to collapsing. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, people aren't buying those indie games and it's not an indie game. It's actually published by, uh, Atlas. It's the Atlas it's game. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but it's just like, even though, the you know, their name carries weight now, right? Because Persona three sixty dollars, 60 or $70, right? The remake. Yeah. Well, what you know, I can understand persona a little bit more. It's an established IP. You know, it, it there's a good chance it can still carry that weight, but you know, if persona was 40 bucks, I bet you, I bet you would sell better. Yeah, maybe. And and that was another big one of the big issues that happened when games went up ten dollars. Indie games could go up ten dollars, and you might be looking at like because games that normally were fifty that was in uh forty that was indie they're fifty now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the the indie the indie and double A market has increased in terms of cost. Um. But you bring up a, a funny thing. I, I honestly, I got distracted because I was reading this stupid. Uh, um, this is an article that uh, um, Games Radar put out. I, I'm sick and tired of these pub, uh, these these journalists with the these stupid comments and their uh, their stupid headlines. Um, uh, you there? Yeah. Uh, before I uh, I move on because I do want to continue this conversation. This is what came across my uh, Twitter. They said Hell Divers uh, Games Radar says Hell Divers Two recap recaptures the co op chaos of classic Halo games better than Halo itself. I need I, I need these guys to like because they they they're, they're they're randomly dropping in vehicles like they have a vehicle that's like the war uh the um not the Warhawk what's the 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 original like mongoose type vehicle that was uh that we used to co op in in like from halo two to like now, essentially um, there the, the, you got a vehicle like that in the game. My thing is, why are you guys comparing halo and hell divers? These games are not alike. They're not alike. Hell divers is a co-op horde shooter. That's all it is. A co-op horde shooter with objectives. That is it. You fight bugs on planets and you can, and it has friendly fire. And that's the fun part. You could drop things on uh, people uh, and you shoot bugs. You have objectives and that's it. I don't understand why it compares to Halo. The armor is not the same. The universe is not the same. Nothing about Halo. I play Halo for combat arena multiplayer and I play Halo for its story. Two reasons why I love Halo. I think its story is incredible and I think its multiplayer is impeccable. Helldivers and Halo have nothing in common. So you PlayStation fanboy, stop comparing it. You dumb journalists with no freaking charisma, no dignity. Like, stop it for clicks, for sake. Stop comparing Halo and Helldivers. They're not the same. They will never be in the same thing. Halo's in its own class. Helldivers is it, it, it's new. 
it, it, it's new money, right? It's new money. It's a new thing that people are trying to attach onto because they think PlayStation has cracked the code on multiplayer gaming. They have no. not. They could call it lightning in a bottle, thing. and it, it, it's fine, but it's not Halo. So stop it. Clip this. Post this. I don't care. I don't regret what I'm saying. I stand by what I'm saying. Halo is in its own class by itself. I don't care what journalists, I don't care how many college degrees, how many writing degrees, how many awards, whatever. Helldivers ain't got nothing on a single Halo game. Not a single Halo game. Helldivers 2 ain't touching the worst Halo game. I will say that 10 toes down. Stop it. All right. My bad, Attic. I, I under I definitely understand like where you're coming from. And I don't think that it could touch any Halo game, but I do think that. I could see where they're coming from where in the terms of like scale, it's like, you know, Halo could have done better with its scale because if you remember the old, the original Halos, mm -hmm. they had really good scale. And then they kind of, you know, brought that back a little bit. So I can understand where they're coming from in those terms, but in, in, in just straight up quality, like Halo has a story that people actually care about. Halo's got multiplayer that for the most part, people actually care about. Like they, they're not really... It's not comparable. No. No. Absolutely not. Um, the one thing also one thing I wanted to point out in, in today's episode, because uh, you brought it as far as the pricing, right? There's this, I, I want people to fall back off the, this whole, like, you know, you don't like, uh, oh, you guys need to buy your games and, you know, all this, this, this. There's this over reliance on like still shaming people on the fact that they're not buying games in um the way like people like all the decisions with xbox which we're going to talk about and and people point to oh because you guys don't buy games and all this other stuff um i'm I, like did i had posted a tweet that ticked me off because uh red dragon was quote to me i guess he was trying to egg people on uh, because I said, you know, I'm disappointed in the toys for Bob, you know, you know, break off, which we're going to talk about that because, uh, the reason why I was hyped for toys for Bob, cause I was looking forward to their games coming into game pass, right? The crash the spirals and, and whatever they make, you know, like, you no, know, I want them because I want their games, but I also want their games in game pass. Right. So I, I'm subscribed to game pass. The only reason why I rooted for this ABK deal uh to go through is because hey there's a lot of games they got that like to play in game pass right and the whole point was that you know he wants to highlight that i'm not i wanted them I, I, i'm mad because they're breaking off because their games won't be free or something like that and it's like when you play for when you're in game pass game pass is not a free service you pay monthly it's a monthly subscription just like your netflix account isn't free uh, just like your Apple Music, your Spotify, all that stuff that's not free. You know, you pay a monthly subscription for it and you consume your stuff on demand, right, as, as they come. And, and Game Pass is the same thing. It's just a different medium. It's, it's video games. It's interactive entertainment. So the thing is, it's like, it's like, why are you trying to, like, so what? So what? I want something cheaper. I, I shouldn't have to be rely. Personally, I don't feel like I need to uh, pay fork out seventy dollars for every game that comes out. I don't have to buy every single game that I find slightly interesting the day it comes out at full price. I will buy a game at a discount. I will buy a game off someone. I will buy a game used. I will buy. I will play it in the subscription or I'll play it free. If their game's available to me multiple ways, I'm going to pick the way it's more uh economically uh beneficial to me like so like so why w what is what is this whole thing where everybody has to buy their games at full price uh like all the time why why is that a problem why do i have to like throw away my common sense my responsibility my financial responsibility to make sure i'm doing my part uh, to make sure hey, I, I can say this about this because i buy my games it's, it's, it's a stupid flex. This is the dumbest flex on the internet. And like, you know, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a happy, proud member of Xbox Game Pass. I will continue to be if, if it continues to exist. And I'm happy that it's only what, $16, $17 a month. And I get to play multiple video games that cost 50, 60, $70 in, in most cases. 
on demand when I want, whenever I want, and, and not have to feel like, oh, damn. Because pri- pre-Game Pass, I used to have these conversations monthly. I would count how much money I was spending games, right? And then my conversion ratio on those games would be hella low because I would drop them, right? And dumb me, I uh, converted to digital a long time ago. So when I buy a game, I buy the game. Sure, I can ask for or, 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 or try to get a refund. Xbox t- could give refunds and whatnot, but it's not like me buying a game, uh, trying out for a day and then bringing it back or having to trade it back. It's like well, typically once you you download it, you got it. If it sucks, it sucks. It, it, it's it's just there. It's, just, it's dead weight. Game Pass eliminates the whole buyer's remorse. I never bought it, went into Game Pass, downloaded the game, played it, that damn this sucks i hate that i downloaded it i never had that feeling so it's like all right whatever i'll just like let me get my gigabytes back on my hard drive and find something else to play you know what i mean it it's nothing's wrong with the service but everybody wants to treat the service as if it's a bad thing to the industry like it's a a deterrent to the industry and they should do away with it and anytime they, they they hate the service and then they'll find out like something they'll do a report on like PlayStation and their service. And if PlayStation has anything remotely better in their subscription service, they they can now tolerate the subscription service because PlayStation slightly does it does certain aspects of it better. But when it comes to Game Pass as in whole, it's bad because it indoct- indoctrinated us not to buy games. I still very much buy games. I just don't buy at the rate that I used to because I'm not a dummy. I'm not an idiot. Like I buy when it's necessary to buy, but for the most part, I consume what's available to me via Game Pass. And it helps that the primary platform I play on is Xbox. And because my primary platform is Xbox and, and PC, they have the subscription service where majority of the games that come out and I'm interested is typically found in the service. So why be a dummy? That's like me being mad that um freaking um uh let's say Let's say, for example, Beverly Hills Cop uh, 4 is coming out, right? Eddie Murphy. I, I don't believe this is coming out in the theaters. I do believe this is a Netflix exclusive. Now, that's like, I'm going to watch the movie, right? Because I'm a big Beverly Hills Cops fan. A big Beverly Hills Cops fan, right? I don't own a single one of them. I will. I'll probably look them up to try to buy them, But I don't have a DVD player. I have to use my Xbox to watch some of these things. I don't have a DVD player, personally. I don't have a DVD player. But I am a big Beverly Hills Cops fan. I watch the film's uh three times a year every year right all three of them when number four comes out i'm gonna watch it and i hope it's good but you know one thing i'm not gonna do i'm not going to complain that man this thing could have made so much money if it was available for me to buy like i'm already paying for it i'm already paying for it that's how i look at it. i'm already paying for beverly hill cop uh for it because for every t- day i don't watch a movie in netflix i'm wasting money right but Let's carry on. I need I need to stamp that too. Freaking. Oh, I feel you. Hey, the thing is, is people are too people are too obsessed with thinking their opinion is the end all be all. Like they make too many definite statements. It's just like, dude, come on, man. Like we it, it, it's just like the Xbox thing. I can sit here and, and talk over and over again how I think this is or I think that. Ain't nobody really know. Nobody knows how this is going to work out. Game Pass, same scenario. You know, does other people do it? Yeah, but not to the degree that Xbox does it. Nobody knows how the long-term effect of that is going to affect the industry. Uh, I am under the... I've always had the stance that for the most part, you know, when you see these people complaining about this, uh, saying they're go, oh, you know, they're not going to buy this game because it's on Game Pass, I will say that it's hurt the indie market. How many times you, you saw someone say, oh, that game looks cool, but that looks like a Game Pass game. I'm going to wait for it. So, yeah. you know, th- there are negatives and positives to everything. But, you know, as far as to clown people for spending their money correctly, I don't know about all that one. Yeah. You know, and it's like the, the these games are coming out half the time more and more broken than the last, not working more and more than the last. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna try to clown me for 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 getting one on them? Yeah. It's um, like how bad these games function half the time? You're gonna try to clown me because I don't want to spend sixty, seventy dollars on stuff like Suicide Squad. 
You know, let's talk about that. You know, you go sit there and tell me all, you know, you, you which I didn't, I didn't play Suicide Squad, but all mm-hmm. oh, you, you, you did this all you, you clown, you clowning because you, you spent money on this. Well, let's talk about the people that bought Suicide Squad. Can you honestly yeah. tell me that you feel confident in buying that game? Now, I don't it's know. It's like, once again, you know, I think that we've gotten to the point a little bit. Uh, and, you know, it's not everyone, but I think a lot of people these days are caring more about the the consumer. I mean, caring more about corporations than they care about the consumer. You know, how how many times have you heard someone say, you know, this is just a classic example of toxic positivity, but they'll mm-hmm. say stuff like, Oh, the game, the networks don't work well, but you know, I understand, I understand, you know, that that you can't really tell these things from day one. It's like, look, is that excuse valid? Yeah. Does the consumer should give two shits that they didn't do what they supposed to? Absolutely not. No, the fact that their games didn't work on day one, something like hell divers is the only conversation that needs to be had. Especially when you didn't really see them do too much in terms of open betas, closed betas, mm-hmm. multiple public betas. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that you were happy with paying that forty dollars and not accessing your game for two weeks? Yeah, that's what it seems like. People were hyping the fact that the servers were over- overloaded more than complaining that the servers were overloaded. Like, the thing is, it's like, bro, it's like. As an Xbox fan, I get, you know, crapped on because I'm, they say I'm a corporate slave and stuff like that. And and I get quite a corporate slave for, for simply liking games that uh, they don't or liking a game that's rated at an 80 um, instead of a 90. These guys were celebrating the fact that uh, game servers were overloaded and they couldn't get access to the game. You know what happened to Halo uh, Master Chief Collections when the servers had issues? The review scores tanked and nearly killed the game. Yeah, it did. And you know, he spent funny. years trying to recover from that. It, 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 you know, Hell Divers. It's not acceptable the way Hell Divers came out. You know, it, and especially being a Sony first party game. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I didn't see too many. I didn't see the media really talk about it too much. I didn't see nothing. It, it did felt like you know. It was kind of like a, a let's everyone's got to be understanding, <laughs> you know. And that, that's what I said that there's too many, too much of that going on in the industry. Oh, this game doesn't work the way it's supposed to, but you know it, that's just how the industry is. No, it's not how the industry is. That's just how some of these games are. Doesn't mean you have to accept it. You know, it's like I said, there there could definitely be excuses, and that's fine. But at the same time, let's not sit here and get this shit twisted. Let's not get this twisted at all. The these games shouldn't be coming out the way they are. You know, now these they can have they can have legitimate excuses, but do you think that's the um the do you think that's the consumers even should they even care? No. Um as a as a consumer, but right? I, I feel like a lot of people, especially on Twitter and stuff, mm-hmm. they do nothing but give people excuses. They do mm-hmm. nothing but give companies excuses. Oh, you know, it, just like the the people speaking out about, you know, whether or not Xbox going all, uh, you know, full publisher or whatever could affect Xbox in the long term. Instead of having a conversation that's like, look, this could be such a negative outgoing that it could lead to them leaving the console industry, and I'm very nervous to where my digital output's going to go. Instead of having that conversation, people said, well, you're, 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 you're fear-mongering. I put a lot of money into the Xbox ecosystem, and I'm sorry, I have every right to be concerned on what the direction they're going to do that might lead, even the possibility, mm-hmm. to me losing that access. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so with that being said, the only um, 
So there was no major news, right? Obviously, there was more layoff. PlayStation laid off a bunch of people. Uh, um, I think EA, um, not was it EA? EA laid off a bunch of people. Um, and on the Xbox side of things, or Activision side of things, uh, Toys for Bob announced that they will be going independent. Um, they'll be breaking away from Activision, and technically, at this point, Microsoft and be operating as an independent studio. Um, They did note that they are hoping to enter in a new partnership or a new agreement uh, with Microsoft. They made sure to put that, and they said, keep our our horns up, I guess, hinting up, hinting spiral. Now, when I read this, I kind of, I got annoyed um, for selfish reasons, but I got annoyed. I'm not afraid to admit it. Clearly, you got annoyed. You put out a video. Um, yeah, I lost like thirty subs over that whole shit. Like the Xbox community. Mm. I, I mean, let's be real here. They banished me and you for years. Like mm. we, we we might get expect. I might get. I do get more support from the Xbox community than maybe you do. Yeah, but yeah. they don't like either one of us. Uh, no. Um, and 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 that's that's true. So my thing is, I do want to continue from your take. I mean, I'll give my take a, a little bit later of, you know, how I initially felt, but, um, you took this strongly, um, which is, has, has the reason of some of the, uh, the commentary that's concerning you as a content creator, the commentary on your video, um, and the reaction people maybe thinking you're a bit overreacting. Um, but I feel like, uh, there's a lot to say in this one. And I definitely want to get uh, your your take. Here's the thing. People people sit there and they say, well, Attic, it's better than them being a Call of Duty machine. Mm-hmm. Acting like Xbox can't wake up and say, you're no longer working on Call of Duty. I do not believe that you couldn't have one without the other. You could have done both. You could have easily has uh, ha- had allowed them to make their own games without l- branching them off into a, a different type of company. Now, look, is it good for toys for Bob? Yeah, it depends on if the games work out. People sit here and act like, you know, the way the industry is that it's it's good on indies. No, it's not. You know, there there is there is multiple scenarios that can lead bad for, for toys for Bob. Now they want to do this, so that's cool. You know, I, I'm cool with with them having their creative freedom and them being on their own. It's just when the Activision deal was first announced, I don't give two shits, not even the slightest, on eighty eight percent, and probably more than that. What that what ABK offers, I'm not a card person. Now, I do like some of the Blizzard games, but not many, much. I don't even like Diablo. I mm-hmm. have Diablo on my system right now, mm-hmm. and I don't even like that game. Toys for Bob, because I felt like they're the type of company that makes those old platformers that I really enjoy yeah. when I was younger. I was hopeful that that company would be able to breathe some life into some of uh, Xbox's old IPs, yeah. maybe we make a Banjo-Kazooie. I yeah. felt like out of all the stuff that Microsoft makes, Toys for Bob makes unique stuff that they don't have. Yeah. So that's what I was excited about. Now, obviously, they can still do that. You know, it, it's not mutually exclusive that, you know, they are their own company and they can't work with the Xbox. But, you know, let's say that they do make, you know, a Crash game. Make the best Crash game they've ever made. And then Nintendo hits them up. It's like, yo... We want you to make Donkey Kong. We're going to give you a 10-year deal, five-year game. And then they hit, uh, they hit Toys for Bob. Like, people really liked uh, your last Crash game. Can we get another one? And Toys for Bob's like, I'm being contracted by two other companies, including Nintendo. I don't got time. So they put themselves in a situation that they put themselves in when it comes to Killer Instinct. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. they sitting on all the and the people are like I love when people are said well that that doesn't mean anything addict you know they they still own the IPs okay they own a lot of damn IPs yeah they own a lot of IPs with. yeah 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 
What's the, what the hell is that supposed to mean? They own the IP. Like it, that. That's my biggest issue with the thing. It's just like the same people that drug me through Twitter are the same people that ensured me that Microsoft was buying these studios to properly fund them and and evolve them as 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 developers and make better games in general. These are the same people that told me that. So okay. Um, I guess they meant we're just gonna we're gonna spin them off into their own company. Not to mention, <clears throat> what's this gonna do in the long term of things when it comes to? Do you think that Toys for Bob were the only company that wanted to be alone? But I bet you a bunch of companies didn't even think something like this was possible. So now yeah. the, you probably got other companies in the, uh, that Microsoft owns that's thinking, yo, I want that too. You know, people sit there and they, they attack me. What it is, they don't care. And them go, uh, Toys for Bob's not really a studio that they really care about. So why would they care if, if they're going independent? But let, it, let this bend like, like an obsidian. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious if people would have the same mentality when it comes to, oh, you know, you can't just be, you know, spinning off these these games like you you you, you can't be doing that. But it's because the studio they don't really care about in the long term of things. I think that's the reason a lot of these people be acting this way. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is good for Toys for Bob. Fantastic for Toys for Bob. But I don't understand how Xbox losing a studio, a whole ass studio, is good for Xbox. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I have a, a ton of questions, and you're right, right? So I, I said it like this, and I said the same thing. I was like, all right, ultimately, I do believe is it's good for toys for Bob and only toys for Bob. Um, but it's also a catch-22. It's a gift and a curse. It's a big gamble. It's a big gamble. Because in order for them to operate, they need partnerships like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo to back them for, uh, to pretty much pay them to make a game. Because if they, if they flop, that flop could be strong enough to shut them down. And that's why a lot of studios pretty much close. Now, if this is a situation now, if you put, if, if, if I was behind the walls and I learned that, okay, they, uh, Xbox is going to shut down toys for Bob's, like they're going to close the studio. Then yes, this is the best outcome for them. Because if the, if the ult- ultimate thing was to close the studio, then when, well, yeah, I, I, if, especially I want my studio to be shut down. I'm buying myself out. I'll, you know, and, you know, and I'll operate on my own. <laughs> And I don't even take that as an excuse because then it's, it's not like, an excuse because my thing is in no, Microsoft, no. what do you have? Why would you do something that stupid considering you have a big hole in your library? It, it's not even just that too. Like Michael, you didn't even give these, these people the opportunity to, to make a game under your brand. Yeah. And th- that's the part that's frustrating me. Well, that's why I tweeted the ABK deal was, was, was a mistake. It, it was a mistake Be- because yeah. not only have, are we hearing that you know four games are coming over or which was not uh, hearing anymore that's what's happening uh where also studios that they bought in abk are going off on their own and if people think this is the only studio that's going to do that i don't think so now i'll say this a couple things a couple things i'll say right and just to stay on uh twitch for bob so the problem is, all right, if it was a studio shut down, then okay. But then it, I still think Microsoft needed a Toys for Bob to cover games for children. They, they, don't, have, they don't have platformers in their library. They have a ton of IPs, but they don't have a studio that specializes there. Toys What's for Bob the best is. way for you to sell Game Pass to you, children? To, to children. You and need them. Like, yeah, you need the games. That's why they keep making these games. That's why you, you find games like Bluey and uh, Peppa Pig and all that other stuff. PJ Mask and um, Paw Patrol in there, but it was like, bro, like you guys can actually, you guys have original, uh, original IP appropriate for children that will buy in and more known, uh, that people will buy into service, like utilize them, like they. And my thing is, I can understand if Toys for Bob, like, hey, we don't want to be a part of Activision anymore. Why not just okay, 
you're no longer part of the uh, Activision branch. You're going to be now under Xbox Game Studios, along with like Obsidian and Ninja Theory and all that. You're now separate of that. Do that. And, you know, and then, and, and like, all right, you don't have to work on Call of Duty. But my thing is for Microsoft to agree, because they didn't have to agree. Somebody could request independence. It's like, nah, be bugging. They agreed because they didn't want them from the start. So if you didn't want them from the start, which means they don't get the, they don't get the gamer's picture. They don't, they can't, they don't, they're not interested in filling the holes with uh, gamers. want. And this is, so yes, this is a Microsoft L. This is an Xbox L. Yeah, Toys for Bob. Yes, you got your independence. Good luck. Hopefully the next game you make is a success because it almost needs to be so that you can afford to maintain a studio. Or it just puts them as an independent up pretty much up for sale you know what's to stop nintendo from acquiring them or playstation or ea somebody who doesn't have it and be like hey we need you guys to do this you know what the funny thing about that mm -hmm. is real quick people were clowning me because i said nintendo might be interested in toys for bob they literally make the type of games nintendo likes yeah like what, what do you mean they they wouldn't be interested in toys for bob that is probably the, the, Nintendo's probably always eyeballed them to some degree. Yeah. So my thing is, is and, and Microsoft will be bragging about oh, how much we got twenty seven this studios or thirty. How much is it with, with Activision? Was it twenty seven including Activision or uh, the twenty seven was just Xbox and uh, Bethesda? I think it was uh, thirty four of everyone. Uh, thirty four. With everyone, like that. and now well, I mean, it, it, it's it's minus one. So. It's minus one. It's one less now, um, and I think that was a a, a a bad move for Xbox and 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 me as a consumer. I'm concerned. It's like, all right, I don't know, I don't know. I ain't know. I, I maybe they didn't own any IPs, um, but I figure if they don't own my my first concern was like, well, damn, well, I'm like, Microsoft I'm a, maintains all the IPs. Yeah, maintain all the IPs, it's but I, a, like a, it's a bungee situation where they're leaving on their order core uh with nothing in their hands but my thing is what other studios can really make games like that make rare but rare hasn't conducted a game like that in 30 years so like the thing is, is that it was their best interest to actually keep them and i'm kind of curious on when you look at like because they said well they're being took off the call of duty machine so i'm kind of curious like is something being changed in terms of how Call of Duty is being developed? Because just because these studios left doesn't mean that that's mm -hmm. still not something that needs to be done. Yeah. So it's like, is Call of Duty going to be affected by this? Which I don't really care. Uh, probably to a small degree, but but the thing is, is I don't that care about Call of Duty. Call of Duty comes out and they're making the mobile version. I thought Raven does that. I, I guess but I know Raven. I know Raven does the Warzone. My thing is Call of Duty, like to maintain an annual release of Call of Duty and a proper support, I do think, yeah, they should have their three main studios that Infinity War, Treyarch, um, and Raven, I think should be the only ones. Sledgehammer, they can go ahead and do something else, but I think Call of I think Infinity War, Treyarch, and Raven should be really the ones that power call uh Call of Duty. And I think that that should be enough. You know what I mean? I know like, they're making it, the one the thing is, too, is like, you know, they look at some of these studios and they're like, well, they shouldn't be making, they shouldn't be support studios. Like, mm -hmm. here's the thing. As much as I love games having creative freedom, mm -hmm. when you have big projects that came out yearly, like such as like a Call of Duty, mm -hmm. you need to have support studios helping that, that progression. Now, does that mean they have to do that every time? No. And I think that was the biggest issue with this whole scenario. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, it's just disappointing because, like, that was the only game I cared about. Literally, the only game I, uh, like, the only studio that I cared about mm. that I felt like could make games that would have, you know, enticed me. And now they don't have it. So um, it's just like, uh, I, yeah. At that point, what, what do I get now for the ABK thing? Me personally, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing. I understand, like, the people, the, the studios I was in, most interested under Activision were the ones that had games outside of Call of Duty. So the people who did, like, you know, the, the prototype and stuff like that, I was interested in more of those games coming back. Uh, the people that were doing the licensed games and obviously Toys for Bob for Crash and Spyro because they address platformers, which Xbox sorely lacks. Um, 
But you know, we'll uh we'll see. Um we're supposed to get some news next week on something. Um I, I, I don't know, but um Xbox, you know, it's crazy for a year. This year is weird because they're about they this is the year that Xbox should have put their flag in the ground. Four major games come in this year exclusive, more first party games than uh PlayStation. And they should be utilizing these efforts to market what's coming to Xbox and, and Game Pass and really trying to, this should have been their real push to compete heavy. And instead... Yeah, I think that's the part that annoys me the most. Yeah. They're finally in a position, it's like you said a couple of weeks ago on ILP, where they can seriously, you know, dictate certain things, especially this year. Because PlayStation really, besides Rebirth and... Helldivers, like, what do they really have scheduled that we know about right now? If it was bigger titles, I felt like it would already be announced, so mm-hmm. it's going to be a light year for PlayStation, and instead yeah. of taking advantage of that, all you've been hearing, it, you know, people tell me, oh, you're a doom and gloom addict, like, in ter- even not just Xbox. Mm-hmm. What is there, to, like, the industry is not in a good place. Mm-hmm. Layoffs 24-7. Every day I wake off, there's a studio getting shut outbreak. down or there's yeah. layoffs. Yeah. Every True. day I wake up, there's there's games being madly underperformed or there's games just not doing well at all. Yeah, that's true. And we got to get to the bottom of it. But I, I know you got to get uh, ready for the next uh, podcast. And I want you to be able to get your uh, legs up, get some blood flowing, take, take a deep breath before you sit in for another three hours. Uh, but I appreciate yeah, you. Wonder. Yeah, that's an understatement. Uh, but I appreciate you coming through and, and, and allowing us to uh, get this podcast out the way. Episode uh, 32, Plant Xbox Podcast. Uh, I'm going to cut a couple of these uh, clips up, and it's going on the Kids Smooth channel. But this one you can catch, obviously, whole episode on Patreon, whole episode on uh, BG's channel, but exclusively early access Patreons. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the Weapon Wheel Patreon for that. Addict, thank you. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.